live from the YouTubes. It is Tuesday, April 11th. Um, I got a fan going pretty, pretty hot in this room. And uh, I'm just going to warn you right now. The Wi-Fi where I'm at is absolutely terrible. There's no way to get into the system. This is the only way. So you know what? We're going we're gonna to go for it. <laughs> We're going to see what happens today. Uh, this is kind of a test live stream at the same time as, of course, answering your all's questions. We already have super chats today. I need you to work with me. If it starts to mess up, please let me know. We'll try our best to work through it. But you know what? We're here. That's all that matters. If you haven't noticed, I'm at my uh, second Airbnb in the matter of months. And um the house is slowly but surely being worked on. Let's take a live look at the studio and see what uh, what it looks like. Yep, it's still a barren wasteland. <laughs> so we're going to be here for a little while longer, but that's all that matters. It, it does, nothing matters but the fact that you all are here for today's live stream. Uh, and I want to know, do you hear me okay? Do you see me okay? Please keep me updated as we go. Uh, but I want to get into... I want to get into the chat and see what you guys are saying today. Random Tuesday live stream at 6 p.m. If you guys want to stick with me for the next hour or so, we're going to answer questions. We're going to talk about movies, a little box office, a little Super Mario Madness. And uh, we got a trailer this morning for the Marvel, so I'd be, I'd be okay with um, talking about that for a little bit. Or honestly, whatever you guys want to talk about. If you're here... Again, I appreciate you for being here. Appreciate you for talking to me and just hanging out with me for the next uh, little bit. I know it was a random time for a live stream, but this was this was when I got got some free time. So I said, I want to I want to do it. I want to come say hi to you guys, Jedi Connor, saying, "Hey, Austin, I'm first. What's going on, Jedi Connor? How you doing? Thanks so much for being here. The movie kid, what up, the movie kid? What's going on? We have Ian with the first super chat of the day, and I'll come back to your super chat here in just a second. We're just going to say hi to everybody. Super Mario Peanut. Uh, Z uh, J thirteen goat uh, Eli, uh, hello, you're a legend. Oh, I'm not a legend. You're the legend, Eli. No, thanks so much for being here, Cash. What's going on, Cash? Thanks for being here, Mason the Nerd. Mason, as always, it's a pleasure. Uh, we have Christian. We have Owen. Uh, everything looks good. Thank you guys for uh, for uh, keeping me updated on that. Please continue to do that throughout the show if you don't mind. Hello from Bulgaria. Oh, very cool. Early Oscar predictions video coming soon. Yes, yes, you guys saw part one on the channel where we uh, did a little bit of making fun of myself. That was that was a great time, but part two is coming. Part two is coming tomorrow. Uh, my plan is to get that scheduled tonight and uh, hopefully uh, 4 p.m. tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern is when the early Oscar predictions are coming. We're going to be talking about Best Picture in depth, very in depth, so... Be prepared uh, to, to get a little crazy. And uh, one one shocker in there that may surprise some people, but uh, I'm, I'm going to stick to it. What's good, AB? Not talking Antonio Brown. Uh, yeah, Antonio Brown. It's untell him where he's at right now. Uh, let's see. Austin the Feminist. <laughs> Chico, we be talking about the, the Marvels trailer, I assume. I saw my video on TikTok. Um, 23.30 in the UK. Wouldn't miss an Austin Burke live stream. Oh, Jack, come on. Thanks for being here. Listen, I, if it's too late or too early for you guys, I, I just appreciate you for stopping in and saying hi. But if you want to hang out, I would love for you guys uh, to hang out. Hey, from Brazil. Very cool. I uh, would love to know your top three focus feature films. Ooh, Ricky. Oh, man, I'd have to. Well, first of all, I'd have to look at the focus feature films just off the bat. Uh, let me save that for another day. There, there are actually a couple of big focus feature movies coming out this year, and I would like to be more... More in depth with that list, uh, and maybe do a little YouTube short on my top five focus feature films. Uh, but good question, though. I'll definitely keep that. I, when you guys have ideas like that, I like to put them in the back pocket for a video, and down the road, hopefully, make a video about something like that. Uh, Rose Lover, hi from Ohio. Rose, I was just in Ohio a couple weeks ago with. Let me put the picture on the screen. These two knuckleheads, Mr. Fligginger and Mr. Chandler. That was a fun time. So, uh, Ohio, very, very nice. Hi from Delaware. Yeah, where's everybody coming from today? We got Delaware, we got Ohio, we got Bulgaria. Uh, Ricky uh, saying, love that. My sleep schedule's awful anyway. Same here, Jack. I'm not in my home, so I can't get good sleep nowadays. Uh, talking about the internet's two favorite uh, directors, Chris Pratt and Brie Larson. Yeah, it's like a complete opposite sides on both actors. But uh, yeah, what a, what a fun time that is. Uh, are you going to do a Marvel Cinematic Universe tier list again when the Marvels comes out? Or are you waiting for Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, 
know basically am I going to do one now or am I going to do one in November when Marvels comes out? You know, it. what would you guys like to see? Honestly, would you like to see uh, me doing a Marvel Cinematic Universe tier list after Guardians or after the Marvels? Please leave those comments down below. Actually, I want to take advantage of this little feature. Let's see if I can... Uh, we got an ex excellent connection, by the way. This is nice. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, here we go. Mar uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or Marvels. This is a pretty cool thing. And it, it, this is something I've been wanting to do. G-O-T-G or Marvels. And the question is... When would you guys like me to do the tier list? So we got GOTG or Marvel. This was kind of on the fly, but uh, let's ask the community. Oh, look, we're taking advantage of live stream features. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Stream health, good. Viewer activity, good. Everything's looking pretty good on mine. I'm actually really surprised... <laughs> we got a poll up, baby. You guys, please respond. I'm actually really surprised that everything's holding up right now. Looking looking pretty good. Mr. Burke, we meet again. Yes, we meet again, Mike. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, but we have some super chats. I want to get into these super chats, man. Uh, to anyone who helps this channel out, who takes their time and, and, you know, feeds into the channel and that always goes back into it. And you guys just, just know your money is being used in the right way, not, not in the wrong way. Oh, also, if you're here and you want to drop a like, man, I, it, that would be the best thing. That's the best way to help these live streams by dropping that thumbs up. We've got 50 people. I would love to see if we could get to 50 likes by the end of this video. Uh, but also the super chats. That's the best way to ask questions. And we start with Stumbo's Mia Outlet. Ian, my guy, hope all is well. I saw D&D &D and Air. Wow, they were great. Hope you had a blast at the cons. Jealous you met Hen Henry Winkler. Oh, that was so much fun. What movie are you most looking forward to in May? Thanks for being a friend. So I've got the screen picture on my community tab right now. So if you guys want to see myself, Sean Chandler, Cody Leach, and uh, my guy, John, you want to see us hanging out with the Screamcast, that picture is on the community page. That was so much fun. In terms of the cons, Ian, I've got all the pictures, uh, all those specific pictures right here, man. We had, and Ian, if you don't mind, I'm going to take your chat off for just a second. Uh, we had such a great time at this. I mean, getting together, one thing, you know, I, I saw 3C back in 2019, got to go hang out with him for a little bit, but it was really nice to see him again. Got to meet Cody Leach for the first time. Um, I can't tell you exactly what we bonded over yet. <laughs> that is a secret for later in the summer but man oh man uh the, the second we started talking i knew i knew cody's a guy that i'm, I'm going to be reaching out to many 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 times in the future uh but but yeah yeah i'll, I'll let you guys know what that was about uh here in a couple months uh and then of course sean you know who i got to hang out with last year and and john man john and i you know john was my roommate on these trips we had a great time to get <laughs> I love messing with John, uh, but, but uh, man, so many stories. One of these days, one of these days, I'll, we'll have to tell stories. Maybe we'll get together and tell these stories, but uh, but you guys know how much fun I have hanging out with him, man. It's, it's, he's one of my favorite guys on YouTube, so uh, we genuinely had a great time. Then we got to meet Perry Nemiroff and Koi Jandro. And if you guys are in the space, you know exactly who those two are. Man, oh, man, um, really good people, Koi of just energy galore so much fun to talk to so much knowledge man um it was really cool to see him and then perry you know we got to talk about evil dead rises got to talk a little bit about horror uh we actually met each other uh, about a year and a half ago at that uh, critics choice Awards, so we kind of reminisced upon that so man, it, was, it was really good getting to see these people again or for the first time uh and it's it's a nice little community that that youtube has given us here and and you know you see in these pictures well, we're all together hanging out taking pictures but then we're just then we're just hanging out with the people man doing uh, answering questions doing panels we did uh here's me making a really stupid joke but at least i got some laughs you know that's good we <laughs> my jokes are dumb um we did three panels sean did four you know because i left a, a a little bit early but um but man we had such a good time at these panels we really did got hanging out with each other and you know that was great and seeing you all was spectacular. Uh, but it's just spending time with people that have the same, you know, loves and, and affinities as, 
as uh, as you guys do. I mean, that's the reason you're here because you love movies and all these guys on this panel, man. It's not fake. <laughs> it's genuinely not fake. This is these guys are as real as it gets. Um, and those other two, Coy and Perry, they are as real as it gets. So it's nice to see that they love it as much as you think they love it, as much as you see them loving the videos and um, kind of on that same level of passion. So Ian, all of that in response to your super chat. <laughs> it's a great question, obviously. Um, but your your question question, your second part of your question, what movie are you most looking forward to in May? Man, that's that's tough. I You know, some really good ones here. I keep seeing these Guardians of the Galaxy trailers. I keep seeing these Guardians of the Galaxy trailers, and I'm just falling more and more in love with what this movie could be. And I'll put some more pictures here. This is one of my favorite ones because uh, John and I were laughing at something that Cody said. But um, but yeah, I, I I genuinely think that's going to be a turnaround for Marvel. Not that it full on needed a turnaround. Um, but it's more so the fact that this could be a boost after, well, really for the comic book genre in general, after Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then uh, obviously what happened with Shazam 2, and, and they're not terrible movies, but they weren't, you know, they were fine. They were just, they were, they were, they were fine. So I need something more than fine. I think Guardians of the Galaxy could be that, but I pose the question to you all. Um, what is your most anticipated movie in May? I think it's a great question. I think Ian uh, you know, kind of opens the, and, and really we have May and June. I think June is going to be a huge month as well. I think of June, I think of Across the Spider-Verse. I think of uh, Indiana Jones, what that could do. Uh, what's the release date on Mission Impossible? I know you guys know the answer to this question, but that's one that I, I am just freaking out over. I know Oppenheimer and Barbie come out the day after my birthday. So my birthday celebration is going to be with uh, Christopher Nolan and Barbie. It's going to be a great time. Uh, so this summer is going to be really, really good, man. Ian, Obviously a phenomenal question, but thanks for the super chat. Thanks so much for uh, asking the question, and thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, by the way, I did see we're up to let's see forty likes. Four, freaking awesome, man! That thank you. That that's what that's what I'm talking about. Um, I'm in an Airbnb, so I have to be a little more quiet than usual, but I can't do that. Look, I have Doodle Bob. Check this out. My buddy Chris made this. Wow. <laughs> It makes me so happy. I didn't bring a lot of things to this place, but that's one thing I had to bring. Uh, Super Mario Penis is high. Uh, thank you guys again for being here. Uh, let's see, Movie Guy. Movie Guy 11 with the Super Chat. Thanks for being here, Movie Guy. What's a movie that you completely disagree with critics on? Also, love the channel. Keep killing it all the way from Ireland. Movie Guy 11. Thanks for the question. It's a great question. It's actually, it's funny. We got that question on the panel. What's a movie that I disagree with critics on? Recently, uh, and it wasn't a, a dreadful uh, Rotten Tomato score. It was in the 50s, but it was one that I was I was just so baffled that it wasn't in the 70s or 80s. That was Bullet Train. Bullet Train last year, I thought, genuinely was a really, really fun action movie. Um, it was a little over the top. Maybe I needed a John Wick fix, to be honest with you, but I got my John Wick fix. I thought that was one that really delivered on the concept and you had great characters and you had uh you know uh, tangerine and lemon i thought was one of the best duos of the year man it was really genuinely so much fun on the other side of things you know i i have a movie in my brain that that a lot of critics like that i wasn't a big fan of it's the mist and i've said this a thousand times i'll say it again it's not a movie i responded to i didn't love the direction phenomenal director one of my favorites of all obviously directed one of my favorite movies of all time uh but you know, I just wasn't a fan, and some of the decision making at the end. I understand you had to work off the source material, but uh, I just didn't love the way that story went. And then one for me that I disagree. You know, some people say it's one of Scorsese's best. Not everybody says that. Most people say it's one of his good movies. One of his, but I would say Mean Streets is is a is a drastically overrated movie that I don't think works very well. And I think Scorsese was still kind of figuring out his craft. And um, it's not a movie that I responded to on the level that I wanted to. So I think Mean Streets is one of those classic films that everybody talks about that I'm just, I watch and I was like, eh, you know, <laughs> and I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I was just not in the right frame of mind. And I'll have to give that a, uh, I'll have to give that an another shot. But um but yeah, I, I would say Mean Streets, The Mist, uh, recently Bullet Train. 
I mean, I was positive on Mario. I know a lot of critics didn't like Mario. I think it's got like a 48 meta score. I was, was positive, man. And it was, it was a fun movie. It was a cute movie for kids. It did what it did for families. And, um, you know, I I thought it worked for what it was trying to do. You know, is it a great movie? No, but I, I was positive. I tried to up that score a little bit on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I'm shocked to see Chris from 3C wasn't in that picture with the Scream cast. Oh, G. Colby P. talking about the Scream picture. Uh, so Cody Leach, uh, Sean Chandler, Flick Pick, and I were in that photo. The reason 3C wasn't in that photo is because 3C and his... So his girlfriend actually came with him, uh, Ashley, who is wonderful. I think those two are uh, amazing. They're made for each other. They're amazing people. But uh, but they got they got their picture separately. So so Chris had to get his with Ashley, uh, and that's why he wasn't in our picture. But we got ours together. Um, Cody is a beast for getting that together. I, I can't tell him thank you enough. Incredible. But uh, but yeah yeah. I, I wish Chris was in it, man, because we, we we had some fun together. We really did. I want to see you and Koi Jandro collab on a video. Me too. Me too. I I thought we got along fairly well together, to be honest with you. So hey, if he's ever down, man, I'm down. By the way, we are at 50 likes right now. We're at 50 freaking likes. And I'm feeling really good about that. So thank you guys for dropping that like down below, man. That is awesome. Also, 80 people. 80 people on a Tuesday, man? Ask questions. If you guys want another poll, let me know how you like the poll. I like the poll things. So we'll start doing that. Uh, we'll start doing that in a, uh, in a, okay, let's, let's not spoil anything about the new episode of Succession. I don't want to talk spoilers, but I will respond to this fairly quickly. Succession Season 4, Episode 3 is a 10 out of 10 on IMDb. Holy guacamole. Succession Season 4, Episode 3, I believe, is maybe my favorite episode of TV of all time. I'm not kidding. Recency bias. I get that. I understand. Um, it's up there. You know, I have my Breaking Bad favorite. I have my Sopranos favorite. I have my uh, Game, Game of Thrones favorite. Uh, but I would say this is the best Succession episode, and this is in the conversation of my favorite episode of television. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil anything because not everyone's seen it yet. Hato the babe. Perhaps a silly little question. Hayden, you don't ever ask silly questions. Thanks for being here, my friend. Um, need to see you at another screening sometime. That was really fun. Thoughts on Banshees of Inishirin. One of the funniest flicks I've seen recently. So Hayden with the super chat. Thanks for being here, my friend. I, I loved... Look, I loved Banshees. It was in my top 10 movies of last year. I thought it was a incredibly put together dark comedy you know it's so different and even compared to mcdonough's filmography it is distinct right he he has a style and he sticks to that style he does dark comedy very well uh, i think he's a really good i mean really 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 emphasis on really great director but for me it's the writing it's the writing uh, of his movies that stick out and stand out so well and i thought and she's one of the best scripts uh screenplays he's ever done maybe not my favorite movie that he has directed but my favorite movie he has written if that makes sense i'm going to separate the two but i think banshees worked really well for me but yeah very funny very funny hey though this is this is a movie that made me laugh maybe more than any other movie last year in the conversation i think everything everywhere made me laugh a lot uh there were some other comedies that worked well for me i, I still think unbearable weight of massive talent was one of the funniest movies of last year and that movie bombed at the box office. I hope it's doing well because of the memes. I think the memes came out, the the, uh, the TikTok meme and, and all that stuff, that's that's kind of helped it a little bit, but that was a great movie. That was a funny movie. Uh, but yeah, Banshees of Inishirin, very funny film, Hato. Thanks for asking the question. Thanks for the super chat. We'll get to Jack's super chat, and then we'll get into some of these other just normal chats here for just a second. Uh, Lord of the Rings theatrical or extended? I love Return of the King Extended. Oh, it's it's extended for me. So I think if I was a newcomer, Jack, if I was watching Lord of the Rings for the first time and I saw the extended cut first, I feel like maybe I would think it was a bit too long because I didn't grow up with it. I don't have the nostalgia for it. I can appreciate the storytelling. I can appreciate this. But a four-hour movie is a really long movie. It's a really long movie. That That's... That's something that I feel like the fans appreciate more, the extended edition, the, the, the hardcore Lord of the Rings lovers. But that being said, I think the storylines, and specifically you mentioned Return of the King extended, I think the storylines in that movie only enhance the film, only enhance the experience. Now, do I feel that way because I love the original cut? 
or do I feel that way because I, you know, I'm just a big hardcore fan. I don't know. But I think if I had to choose, I would choose extended. But if you are watching Lord of the Rings for the first time, I would say first, go with theatrical. That's the route I would go. But it's a great question, Jack. It's a great super chat. Um, anytime I get to talk Lord of the Rings, anytime my wife gets to watch Lord of the Rings, I mean, she, she's maybe a bigger fan than I am. Uh, but that's our thing to do together, man. Lord of the Rings, amazing. I asked a while ago, Mission Impossible 7. So it is July. It's not June. So yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. stacked May, stacked June, and then Mission Impossible and Oppenheimer and Barbie in July. Yeah, come on, man. This is ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Hi, Austin. How you doing? And I'll get back to these super chats here in just a second. Just want to say hi to the other chats here. Monster Picture, love your content. Monster Picture, thanks for being here. Bullet Train is really good. I agree. I enjoyed Bullet Train. 3,000 years of longing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't... Uh, you, you, so you're saying you disagree with critics. So they liked that one, right? Yeah, I, I think I agree with you there. Um, I hear the director's cut of The Mist is good. That's interesting. I've never seen the director's cut. I think Babylon being 50% is baffling. Um, I don't disagree with that. My, look, I, I enjoyed aspects of Babylon. I think it's technically a beautiful movie, very well put together. The story was all over the place for me, so I don't hate that 50%, to be honest with you. Um, let's see. More excited for James Gunn's DCU or the Multiverse Saga MCU? Um, you know, I... And maybe at this point, James Gunn's DCU, I, I think the idea of that being something fresh and new and different is cool. That's enticing for me. Uh, so that's probably where I'd go right now. Sorry if you spoke about Succession already. Where does it rank in your top TV episodes? Uh, yeah, well, I just talked about that. I'm sure you were here when I mentioned it. Uh, yeah, it may genuinely be one of my one of my favorite episodes of TV of all time. It was absolutely phenomenal. You excited for Bo's Afraid? Excited, nervous. The length has me a little concerned. Uh, but I'm a big Ari Aster fan, so my goal is to see that on Tuesday. If I get back from my diaper party at a reasonable time. What's a diaper party, Austin? Well, um, we're going to a casino, so how does that make sense? I don't know, but we're doing it, and I'm very excited for it. Top guilty pleasure flick. Uh, I love the Scooby-Doo movies. I grew up with the Scooby-Doo movies, man. Those are those are guilty pleasure thousand percent austin powers and gold member comes to mind um i know it's not as loved as the other two austin power movies but they are it's it's such a funny movie such a funny experience uh let's see here i don't even feel guilty about loving the proposal i i think the proposal is actually a really good romantic comedy uh and i think it was actually like respected by critics and stuff as well so that's just a pleasure that sounded weird uh good question though Austin, the Marbles is like Charlie's Angels meets No Way Home. And do you think a lot of men, men will hate on it uh, because the female cast lead film? Yeah, I think people will hate on it inevitably. But I, you know, I thought the trailer was sweet. It was cute. I, I still have my hesitations about the movie, but it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a fem female cast. It, uh, boy. But um, no, for me, it was just kind of like, I hope it's as different as I think it could be. I hope it doesn't fall into the standard MCU trope and it does something, but it does look fun. So I, I'm, I'm still nervous. I'm still hesitant, but I'm excited about it. Um, uh, what is super chat? Well, super chat is, uh, people asking questions and, uh, throwing in some, some money to ask the question. But again, nobody is required to do that. I just, I, I respect and appreciate everyone who does do that. But if you're here and you're hanging out, that's enough for me. And I, I appreciate everybody who's doing that. And, but, 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 you got to drop a like, man. If you're here, you haven't dropped a like, that's the best way to help these videos. So if you're here, we're at 90 people, man, dropping that thumbs up, the best way to do it. Much respect, much, uh, much love, man. Uh, here we go. Uh, I like Alita Battle Angel more than most people. It has a 62% on Rotten Tomatoes. You know what? I, I, I think Alita Battle Angel deserves higher than a 62%. I think that's a fun movie. I think that's a uh, an entertaining ride. Did I love it? Did I love it? No, I didn't love it, but it was really fun. Genuinely really fun. All right, let's get back to these super chats. We got Will Heron. Will Heron in the chat. Will, thanks for the question, my friend. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, assuring that I see your question. Do you watch Barry? Uh, a little behind. Uh, haven't seen uh, season four. Haven't done a review for season four but yeah like like you're saying right now the reviews for season four have been phenomenal 
completely agree. What I've seen so far, and just tweets, I've not read reviews. I don't like reading reviews before I watch things. In my opinion, it's one of the very best shows on TV. HBO is undefeated. Yeah, so you've got Succession and Barry at the same time. HBO is putting these out, not the same time, the same day, but I mean, they're going to be coming out back to back. And for me, that's like, we're in the best age of television right now, man. We just got The Last of Us. We just got House of the Dragon. Uh, Succession is on fire right now. I need to do my catching up on Barry. But as soon as I do, I'm very excited to see the new season. And it, it's it's one it's the final season of Barry as well, right? I believe it's the final season. It's one of those things. Oh, and I, I really enjoyed Beef on Netflix. I thought that was a good show. I look at TV and I just, to me... Other than two or three movies this year, TV has been better. I mean, the, the TV that I've been watching has surpassed the movies that I've seen this year, other than John Wick and Air. Those are the two films that stand out from the crowd for me. Uh, but in terms of TV, I mean, with The Last of Us and Beef and Succession, my anticipation for Barry... Uh, yeah, I've been a little up and down on Mandalorian, to be honest with you. So I, mean, I thought episode five was great. That's the only one I thought was great, to be honest with you. But overall, I, I'm really digging what we're getting on TV. And like you said, said uh, HBO, <laughs> HBOs, man, they are rocking our world right now. It's really cool to see. So I'm excited to see uh, Secret Invasion, to be honest with you. I think Secret Invasion could get back to the formula of, I don't want to say the formula, could get back to what we love about the MCU with that Winter Soldier spy genre thing. So uh, that's really exciting for me and then everything hbo has in the pipeline for this year just seems like it's going to be really cool will hey thanks for the super chat great question excited to see barry hopefully when i see it i'll fill you guys in on on uh, when i catch up fill you guys in on what i think of um fast and furious 137 is out next year oh boy fast and furious 10 i can't wait uh, what do you think about past lives have you seen it yet oscar contender chris i haven't seen past lives but tomorrow, since you guys are here and you're hanging out with me right now, tomorrow I'm going to be putting out my way too early Oscar predictions. And uh, I'll tell you right now, past life, that, that's going to be on that list. And that's going to be in my 10. And I have a good feeling that that movie could be special. Monster Picture, love your content. Thanks for being here, Monster Picture. By the way, you guys are blowing up the chat right now. That is awesome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for asking so many freaking good questions, man. Super chat or not. You guys are wonderful today. Um, let's see. Who is your favorite Guardian? Man, it's, I, I'm always torn between... I love me some Star-Lord. I love me some Groot. We've seen different variations of Groot, obviously. Uh, probably Rocket. Rocket's the most intriguing for me. Um, and I think Rocket's story is going to come full circle in this movie. Uh, so yeah, probably Rocket. Better musical career, Michael Jackson's or Bowser's? Bowser's. 100%. What an amazing... <laughs> what an amazing... Uh, one song... That's all he needed. Okay, Will Heron, uh, based on the title, and thanks, Will, again, for the super chat. Title and plot. Do you think The Critic will be Tarantino's most divisive movie? Ooh, that's a good question, man. My goodness, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you, you hear Tarantino's The Critic, and he, he ob obviously, automatically, think it's going to be a riff on critics. But I believe he just came out with a quote and said, it's not fully going to be, this is, apparently he says, based on the story of an independent, no-name critic, and it's not going to be full-on, like, ah, critics, because critics, I mean, they've always been fairly kind to Tarantino, to be honest with you. And I don't think kind, like, oh, well, we just, his movies were fine, but we're just, no. We love his films. And I guess I throw myself into that category of critics. We love Tarantino's movies for a good reason. I think they're amazing films. So I don't know if it's going to be a, a full on like, uh, here's what a critic does. Here's what he does bad. Here's what I, I genuinely believe it's going to be just a kind of a straight up story with a Tarantino twist. Although part of me hopes it does have a couple of things because look, I'm a movie critic. I enjoy doing this. I really do. There are things that critics do that make me mad. There are things that critics do that are kind of like eye rolling and just kind of like, oh, come on, guys, you know, what are we what are we doing? You're not going to vote in. Uh, and these aren't critics, but these are people in the industry. We're not going to vote in Adam Sandler for Uncut Gems because he used to be a comedic actor. Like what? And that's not even a critic thing, but that, that's the that's an example of the type of 
bull. That's a live stream. I don't think I can curse on a live stream. The type of bull that people do uh, in that zone, in the industry, in the critic space and things like that. So, hey, if Tarantino wants to do that, just riff on that a little bit. I'm open to it, man. I love making fun of myself. I think it's fun. <laughs> I just did a video where I'm making fun of my old Oscar predictions. They were terrible. I was very wrong. So, yeah, I uh, I kind of hope it's a little divisive, but I still think critics are going to really, really dig it. Uh, and where it's his last film, he could go all out, to be honest with you. But I don't know if he's going to go all out to where it compromises the quality of his movie world. That's a good question. That's it. It's some, what, what did you guys eat today? I mean, these are some of the best questions I've ever been asked. Mike says, I ask silly questions. Mike, you don't ever ask silly questions. You ask good questions. Don't you look down on yourself like that. Yo mama likes the poll. Dag, gone it, Mike. You got me again. I'm currently binging succession. Oh, it's the greatest binge of all time. You're, you're about to have the greatest binge of all time. It's amazing. I didn't binge it, but actually I binged a little bit of the first season, um, to be honest with you. But, uh, but I, uh, yeah. I, I, I love that show so much. God, I love that show. Uh, keep me updated, guys, on the uh, on the mic and the, the Wi-Fi, everything. I mean, look, we're holding up good so far. All right, we're holding up good. Fairly surprised, to be honest with you. We're at 77 likes. I think we can get to 100 by the end of the day, to be honest with you. I think we can do it. Outside of movies, are you more of a Marvel or DC Comics guy? Oh, DC Comics all day, Peter. I, I, I'm a big, I, I grew up reading DC Comics. I loved uh, Teen Titans. Big Justice Society guy. Uh, yeah, you, the, when you look at Marvel, for me, it was Fantastic Four. That was the comic that just stuck with me. That's why I'm still kind of bummed that we've never gotten that proper Fantastic Four storyline in the movies. But in terms of DC, man, huge Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, one of my favorite stories in general of all time. Uh, amazing. I liked Cyborg growing up. I was fascinated by Cyborg. And, and I guess part of that was the uh, anime Teen Titans show. Man, I love that show so much. But he was also a really cool character in the comics, and I thought the Teen Titans in general uh, were great. So maybe one day we'll get that in a movie. I think that would be really fun. Are you excited for Asteroid City, and will you be doing a Wes Anderson ranking? I don't want to fully commit. Yeah, I do. I, I plan on doing a Wes Anderson ranking this year, but... He has two movies coming out, according to a lot of people. He has two movies coming out. So I may wait till that second film to do a Wes Anderson ranking, but I'm very excited for Asteroid City. I thought the trailer was cool. I mean, it's great cinematography, looked great. You know, it could be one of those Grand Budapest Hotel situations to where I, I appreciate the more I watch. It could be a Moonrise Kingdom. Actually, you know what? I don't know if it's going to be a Moonrise Kingdom because that's my favorite Wes Anderson movie. It's a great film, uh, but Asteroid City looks cool. Looks interesting. Uh, thoughts on the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie? I was just texting 3C Films about Five Nights at Freddy's, actually. I don't know a lot about it. I'm having Chris fill me in on, <laughs> on Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know a lot about it. I know it was a video game. I know it was really popular. I never played it. I don't know anything about the character. So I'm relying on, on 3C to fill me in on Five Nights at Freddy's. So that's hopefully going to be, um, hopefully I'll know more about it by the time the movie comes out, which is in October, I believe. Um, what movies, uh, which movies could be in the can lineup that you want to see most? Oh man, um, I know they've already announced a couple, right? And I can't remember which ones, but they've already announced a couple of movies. I believe they said, did they say Indiana Jones would be a can this year? Um, Man, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of the release dates of... I'm trying to think of the release dates of everything and how it would, would line up. I'll have to do a, uh, a Cannes Film Festival predictions video. I know I didn't do one of those last year. Kind of like my most anticipated. Uh, just to hear what people have to say about those movies. But I need to look and see... Uh, at the lineup, which movies could be in, and you know, part of me hopes that Nolan. I don't, I don't know if Nolan's going to do the award circuit because he usually likes to wait until those press screenings. But that'd be cool if he dropped Oppenheimer. Uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> Oppenheimer. Um, that'd be cool if he dropped Oppenheimer. Man, that's one I'm curious. What are we going to do about screenings? Because I never got a tenant screening. I know that was in the midst of COVID. I get that, but it was very hard to come by a tenant screening. So. Is it going to be easier to get to see a Christopher Nolan movie this year for me? Um, or am I going to have to drive six hours like I normally do? Howdy, good sir. Kali Wally. 
Kaliwali on the TikToks. Oh, also, we have a super chat from Mike. Mike, I got to go. I got to come back up to you. But we're going to focus on Kali Wally right now. If you could take any game and adapt it into an art house film. Oh, man. Well, seeing that I'm not a huge gamer, this may be difficult. But which would you choose? For me, it would be Dark Souls and Journey. Uh, I am familiar with Dark Souls. I'm not familiar with Journey. Man, turn it into an art house film. Yeah, I, immediately, I want to say Resident Evil, but I don't want another Resident Evil movie. We've had 17. <laughs> We've had so many Resident Evil movies, and frankly, I'm sick of them. I mean, maybe one day we'll get a good one, but I I don't know. Um, into an art house movie. Man, that's tough. That's tough. I, I, man, that's really tough, because I don't play, I, I honestly, man, I don't play a lot of video games. I play Destiny. How about Destiny? There you go. I bet, what, how would it be an art house movie? I have genuinely have no clue. Uh, aren't we getting though? Here's an interesting topic. Uh, what was it? Was it called Backrooms? Is that the name? Is it Backrooms? I keep seeing that. I've never played it, but I keep seeing gameplay videos of it. And then obviously they're modding it and they're adding in all the other characters. But I think we're getting a Backrooms movie. And I'm pretty sure like one of the creators who's young and he's like he's like in high school or something is directing the movie for A24. Am I wrong? Did I make that up? Am I making that up? I don't know, but that's cool to me. Anything horror, Kali Wally, anything in the horror world, that's why my brain went to original, straight up, no nonsense, no no side plots, no B plots, no random characters that are in the games, blah, blah, blah. That's why I went to Resident Evil, because like, if you can do a game that's so simple and scary in an artsy way, I think Hereditary. I think some of these A24 movies. I, 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 but I was afraid, apparently, is, is terrifying in an interesting way. But I think of something like that. And The Backrooms, to me, is really interesting, man. If they could turn that into an art house type story. And if it is A24 doing it, and I don't know if I'm making that up or not. If it is A24 doing that, then that's cool. That's that's really cool to me. So, uh, Backrooms is not a game. It's a YouTube web series. Okay, well then, okay, Backroom, Backrooms is a YouTube web series. But I am seeing gameplay on TikTok of backrooms, people running through things. So I know it's a game. <laughs> uh, I know it's a game. It's, it's somewhere it's a game. Um, but because people are like modding in things to chase people or something like that. Anyway, um, or maybe that's a different game that I'm thinking of. Regardless, I don't play video games, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but um, give me a Super Smash Bros. artistic movie. I think we're getting a Super Smash Bros. movie, by the way. I'm calling my shot right now. I know that's being joked about online, and I know that people are talking like, ah, well, yeah, we got I think they're going to take these Nintendo properties, and I think they're going to milk them, whether that be a good or a bad thing. Um, and I think this is going to be a universe, okay? And it may not come across as a universe until Super Smash Bros., but I think we'll get a Star Fox. I think we'll get a Metroid. I think we'll get... I mean, they could do Kirby. I don't know how that would work, but that would be cool. That would be really cool. That's that's me. Super Smash Bros. That's my game. That's the game I care about. I don't know about all this other stuff, uh, but I, this is that's the what I care about. So if they do that, I know they're milking the property at that point. I would be really excited about that. Yeah, somebody said Austin showing his age here. Yeah, no, that's fine. I listen. I don't know anything about. I don't. I don't know anything about these. Um, let's see. That's an L take Austin. Have you ever tried playing video games that are choice based on Telltale games? No, no. Look, I, I, I've played um, I played the Arkham series. It's for me. It's not. I don't want to play video games. I don't have time to play video games. Frankly, I I choose to watch movies in my free time, and I choose to do sports, like listen to sports, podcasts, all that stuff. So those are my those are what make me happy. Video games for me, uh, they make me too frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> and frankly, I don't want to pay for a console, to be honest with you. Um, but, 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 I, my brother has a Switch. I go play Super Smash Bros. with my brother all the time. He beats my butt. He's incredible. He plays in tournaments, uh, but it's fun. And um, I have played the Spider-Man game. Really good time. Uh, when I did have a console, I played the Arkham games. Those were great. Uh, Mortal Kombat versus, it was versus the DC characters. That was great. But for me, you know, it's, it's it's just a time thing. And now with a baby on the way, uh, 
It ain't happening. I'll get her a console. She can play video games when she gets older, but this is <laughs> that's not man. I just don't have time. Um, Mike says Battle Royale, Captain Marvel versus Omni Man versus Thanos with the Power Stone versus Flurkin. <laughs> oh man. Uh, this is good, Mike. This is good. Man, Captain Marvel, she really took on Thanos. I mean, just kind of like headbutt, Captain Marvel didn't move. So that that would be a tough battle. But there's something, and Thanos is hard to defeat. It took the entire Avengers to defeat Thanos. So I would put Thanos slightly over Captain Marvel. There's something about Omni-Man. There's something about Omni-Man that makes me nervous. And I know Thanos has the gauntlet. I assume you said, okay, so just Thanos with the Power Stone. Ooh, I'm going Omni-Man. If he's just got the Power Stone, not the entire gauntlet, I think Omni-Man wins. That Omni-Man is scary. That's a scary dude. J.K. Simmons, when he gets mad, I don't want to be on his bad side. So I, I'm going to go Omni-Man in that battle versus a flurkin, which is great. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go Omni-Man. Let's see here. Uh want to scroll back down to these other Super Chats here, guys. Uh, should Super Mario Brothers get nominated for the, uh, I assume you mean animated feature, right? At the Oscars. You know... I don't know. It's too early to say. Right now, I'm going to say there will probably be five animated movies. Eh. I don't know. It's tough, man. That's tough. It may slide into that five spot. I think with the box office, it's going to uh, it's going to slide into that five spot. Mike says Duck Hunt. <laughs> I, I am familiar with Duck Hunt, man. Uh, that is a... You know, well, first of all, a character on Super Smash Bros. But also a really fun, old-fashioned great those are the games i like man on the arcades man those are those are really fun uh let's see here kind of trying to scroll back down here are you going to watch skin of marink man everybody's everybody's got an opinion on skin of marink all i see on twitter are skin of marink memes and sometimes i see one and i'm like i would really like that and then other times i see one and i'm like i don't know if i would like that so <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll watch it eventually. But uh, are you going to see the Pope's Exorcist? Yes, I am going to see Pope's Exorcist maybe tomorrow. I think there's a screening locally uh, tomorrow. But Goose will kill Omni-Man. Look, I'm not going to go up against Omni-Man. Flurkin, Goose is hard, but I'm I'm still thinking Omni-Man is going to take them all out. Uh, they should make a Metroid or Zelda movie, but made by DreamWorks, since that's owned by Universal. I would rather see DreamWorks take on these movies than, Illumin than Illumination. I'm not a big Illumination fan. So, but, you know, that, that's kind of whose hands it's in now. Uh, A24's Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, back when I played. Uh, that's obviously, again, I'm showing my age here. Back in the day, I was a big modern warfare 2 fan get in play on rust go crazy for two hours go to my buddy's house man it, th those were the times those were the times so i am a massive uh fan of call of duty if they ever do a movie or a tv show or something like that i think i'll be excited i'll also be a little hesitant but uh but yeah that's the, that's the type of thing I would like to see for sure. Do you think we are losing good indie pictures, um, Ricky? I assume you mean like not getting as many. I mean, we're I don't know studios. I don't know if they're wanting to put as much money into independent films, but I, I've seen a lot of good independent movies lately. I mean, I saw a lot of good ones last year. I think we're going to see some good ones this year. A uh, couple in the in the pipeline that look really good to me. So I don't think so, but. We'll see. Unsubscribe because I got a <laughs> super chat for questions. F that. Gamebred. Now let's let's scale back for a second. Now Gamebred's gone, obviously. Rest in peace to Gamebred. It's an interesting, it's an interesting name. I just clicked on your chat. So what you're saying is you have to ask super chats, yet I just clicked on you. So I think by me clicking on you, it proved that what you're saying is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, don't don't ever feel pressured into uh, asking super chats. I don't want anybody to feel that way. Gamebred felt that way, but now Gamebred is gone. Rest in peace. Actually, just rest. Don't rest in peace. Uh, Fred says, "Will Mario join the billion dollar club?" Fred with the super chat. Great question, Fred. By the way, if I've missed your super chats, 
Um, I think Johnny's my last one here that I got. Uh, please let me know if I skip them or miss them or anything like that. That That's not my goal. I, I, I try not to do that. But if I ever do, please let me know. Fred, it's a good question. Yes, I believe it will. I believe with the opening weekend, with the international number, with the domestic number, with what it did, with the fact that it's the highest grossing movie of the year so far and it's barely been out a week. Actually, it's not even been out a week. It's been out six days. I think it joins the Billion Dollar Club. And I believe, you know, this coming weekend, I, I mean, Renfield and The Pope's Exorcist and uh, Bo is Afraid. I mean, those aren't those aren't movies that are going to take away from Mario. I'll tell you that right now. Mario is a family movie. It's going to get that family box office. Kids are going to want to go see it again. Parents are going to take their kids to see it again. And uh, just, just to shut them up, go watch Mario. <laughs> so I think it's going to keep making a lot of money. And uh, I think it's going to hit a billion dollars. I really do. So that's that's my answer. Very simple, Fred. Great question. Uh, really good question. I think a lot of people are wondering that right now. But genuinely, genuinely, I, I believe it's going to hit the billion dollars. Uh, decision to leave was robbed of a Best Picture nomination. Ricky, I could not agree with you more. I think it was a great movie. Well, I don't want to use the word robbed. Because there were maybe a couple movies I would have put above it. But I think it was a great film wonderful movie that I would have put in for best picture for sure are you excited for blood and honey too <laughs> Cal Clark um no 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 Malcolm says blood and honey goes hard it does it goes so hard that I never want to watch it again ever I hated it. Ricky says, uh, congratulations on your baby. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. We're getting close. Still in an Airbnb. And we're getting close. Hmm. But hey, I think the internet's held up pretty well today. For this being a new place, new location. It looks like an elementary school classroom. But hey, it's okay. We're here. We're here. A little old. A little dusty. <laughs> you know, in your opinion, what makes a perfect movie? Ooh, Johnny. Here's Johnny with a great question, Johnny. Great question. I, it's almost an impossible question because it's so... Everyone's going to give you a different answer. I mean, obviously, you have to have all of the movie qualifications. It's got to be, uh, it's gotta be you know, a technical... Not, not a technical masterpiece per se, but it has to be technically sound from top to bottom. Good cinematography, good sound design, good uh, you know, lighting, good all of this stuff. Doesn't have to be everything, ha doesn't have to be perfect. But if you have everything really, really good or great, and all of that combines with your emotions, <laughs> and you emotionally resonate with it. So, what I would consider a perfect movie is going to be different from what uh, the flick pick would consider a perfect movie, would be different than what uh, 3C Films would consider a perfect movie, would be way different than what my wife would consider a perfect movie. Everybody feels differently. Uh, but for me, I have to respond, I have to resonate, I have to feel what I'm watching in my bones, and there's always something about a perfect movie for me that just, th that I respond to so heavily. I'm like, that's the best cinematography from start to finish that I've ever seen and I love the story and I love the characters or I hate the characters but I hate them in the way that the movie wants me to hate them I think of No Country for Old Men yeah obviously you're not going to love what I believe to be the greatest villain of all time okay but you love to hate him you love to be scared every time he's on screen and so I think that's that's a combination. And then the thing about No Country, and I guess this is the one I'll use in, as, as an example because I think that's a perfect movie. I was blown away by the fact that they chose not to use a score, that they chose to switch character perspectives at one point in the movie. That blew me away. And that I cared so much about the mission at hand that it made me forget about some of the slower moments that I will admit were a little slow, but they were slow in a way that meant something towards the story and then you have the ending that not everyone is a fan of but I think for the movie that they were giving us I think it was the perfect ending so that for me made that a perfect movie and the movies that I feel are perfect I could give examples like that I could go Goodfellas I could go Return of the King I could go The uh, the Dark Knight um, those are all movies that I think are perfect movies 12 Angry Men I think is a perfect movie 
And um, there are a bunch. I would love to go through that list one day. And I think somebody asked earlier, and I, I accidentally skipped over it, when I'm doing my top 100 uh, videos, uh, probably sooner than later. Probably sooner than later. Hopefully within the next couple of months. Uh, but they're coming. Do not worry. They're coming. Why was there never a sequel to John Favreau's Jungle Book? I love that movie, and it almost made a billion dollars. Same with Aladdin. Uh, the Jungle Book, I believe, is the only live-action remake or live-action adaptation tractor beam uh, that I thought was better than the first. I, I thought John Favreau's Jungle Book was better than the original Jungle Book. I, I genuinely believe that. I never loved the original. I thought it was a good movie. I think that one's better. So I'm not sure. I think for me, it's John Favreau. They didn't want to do a sequel without him, and he's a busy guy. Right now, he's formulating Star Wars. So to get him to come back and do that, I mean, that, that's a really tough thing to do. But um, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to say I'm going to say eventually we may revisit that universe. Maybe when he becomes less busy in Aladdin. I think we're doing a sequel to Aladdin. I think we're doing a sequel to Aladdin. Um, I liked Aladdin. Didn't love it, but I liked it more than most people, to be honest with you. By the way, guys, we're at 84 viewers and 84 likes. That's perfect. That's perfect. Although, that being said, I still want to get to 100. So if you want to ruin that, you guys can ruin it. Uh, it will not, no longer be 84, 84, but I, I, I would be okay if you ruin that. Uh, was I the reason you watched Marmaduke JLL, who was in um, in my letterbox comments? Uh, I, I don't want to say specifically. You definitely encouraged me to watch it. I was planning on watching it eventually because I did want to see how bad it was, and then I got through 20 minutes, and I said, nope, got to save the rest for tomorrow. Got to save the rest for the next day. It took me three days to watch it. it. took me three days to make this potato salad, but I watched it, JLL, and I will say, as I kick my camera and I move it over slightly, there we go, move it back, um, you, were, you were a slight reason why I watched Marmaduke, so for that, I say... I don't want to say thank you, because it was terrible. Uh, I was nine years old on Easter morning. My dad says, let's go watch a movie, Hop. <laughs> That's what it was called. I watched it. The comedy is peak. The story is emotional. And the acting is amazing. Oh, Malcolm. I think Malcolm is trolling. But if you're not, look, I, I'm glad you love the movie. I'm glad you love the movie. That's great. I don't like Hop. I think it's bad. But if you loved it, that's awesome. But if you're trolling, that's funny. So either way, thank you for your comment. <laughs> but hey, no, listen. I was how old when Scooby-Doo came out? Uh, I was seven when Scooby-Doo came out, and I was what, two years later, nine, when Scooby-Doo 2 came out. I, I acknowledge that those aren't great movies, but they mean so much to me, and I thought they were hilarious when I was a kid. So I'm willing to look past some of those flaws. All right. I will beat, uh, what will beat Super Mario for top grossing worldwide in 2023? Will these are the kinds of questions that I like. Oh, and other will. I know you have a super chat as well. I'll come back to you. Um, yeah, so it's tough, right? I I think it's going to be hard for Guardians to beat it, but I think Guardians has a good opportunity. I think people have grown to love the Guardians over the years. This could be the Marvel movie that could just dominate the box office. And, you know, I think after Infinity War and Endgame, people are going to be really curious to see where the Guardians are right now really curious and I think the trailers have been great I definitely think that has an opportunity but then I look at some of the other movies coming out later this year man and it's gonna be it's gonna be stiff competition it's gonna be a really cool year when it comes to box office and you know originally I didn't think the flash was going to make a ton of money and I don't think the flash is going to top Mario but you have Michael Keaton's Batman you have Ben Affleck's Batman you have uh, I, I think a very interesting storyline. The drawback for me, the, the, the difficulty in that is Ezra Miller. I just, I don't know if people are going to show out for Ezra Miller and I don't blame them for not showing out for Ezra Miller, to be honest with you. But, uh, but yeah, I look at guardians as the movie that could possibly do it at the end of the year. I don't think Aquaman's going to do it. I think fast 10 has a great opportunity internationally because the international audiences love those movies. Um, so yeah, I think it could be topped, but by the end of the year, I think Mario is going to be in the top three. Um, especially if it hits that billion mark and maybe goes 1.3, 1.4. That's where I think it could go to be honest with you. Uh, Will says, well, Heron, how do you feel about the audience critic divide, especially recently with Mario? I feel like I never hear critics talk about it and give their opinion. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good question. Will. you know, it's, it's, Honestly, it differs per film. 
to be honest with you. Some movies I agree with audiences more. Some, some movies I agree with critics more. Sometimes critics want more from movies than audiences want and need. I think Mario is a, is a movie that people wanted nostalgia. People wanted to feel good. Like we're seeing the characters that we grew up with go on an adventure with slightly new voices, but um, we're seeing that in movie form. And people got that. And I think that's awesome. And I think Mario did for a lot of people what they wanted to do. You know, it didn't do anything more. And for critics, I think they look at movies like this and they they require more. I think they need more. I, for me, like specifically, and I enjoyed Mario. I thought it was fun, right? But I, I needed less of a rushed story. I needed more time with the characters. I, I needed to, instead of highlight through their adventure to get to Donkey Kong, I needed to stay in those worlds a bit longer. I, I There were things that I needed from Mario, and I think that's the thing with critics, and sometimes to their detriment, is they require more than sometimes what the movie is willing to give. And sometimes that's a good thing. You know, I think some movies should be held accountable. And they should give us more than what they give us, right? But I think in a case like Mario, it did what it had to do. And then when you have those critics wanting more than what it had to do, kind of what they think it should do as a film, that's where you start to get that divide. And then you look at the other side of it, right? Uncut Gems. And that's always my example because audiences did not like Uncut Gems. Mostly, I think a lot of you guys did. Uh, but Uncut Gems, you know, it's it's a darker, it's an uncomfortable story, but it did something different, especially with its ending, and that's what a lot of people talk about. People didn't like the ending. God, I hate that we spent that whole movie, and then that's what happens, and it's like, yeah, but that's what the story warranted, but it's also not the standard cliche thing. So that's an example where I'm definitely on critic side. But with Mario, I think I lean more... I think I lean more towards the audience because it's it's built for families, it's built for kids, and that's all the movie needed to do. Now, should we just settle as fans and critics and all this stuff? No, we shouldn't settle. We, we should always want require more, but sometimes it's okay if you just go to the movies and and, and have fun. And I, I I honestly normally don't. Honestly, I've I've paid less attention to both. Lately, I just I have specific critics that I like to hear their opinions, but in terms of the Rotten Tomatoes critic score, you know, sometimes it's it's a little like okay, and then the audience score, it's like some audience members only watch three movies in a year, and I watch two hundred, and so to hear somebody who's watched three movies in a year tell me like, oh, what's wrong with you when I've seen one hundred and ninety-seven more movies, it's like, eh, I get it, but I don't really need that <laughs> you know what I mean like it's fine I love that you love it that's fine but I just I I don't know man it's I I see so many movies it's just like I feel like I can formulate my own opinion and and whether that's with critics or with audiences it's it's going to differ per film uh, but I think it's interesting well wow, man I just I talked for like 20 minutes just now I'm sorry uh, but I think it's interesting every movie is different every situation is different and I, I I genuinely believe that um that there are a lot of times where the audiences, they have a point. And I don't think we should ignore, I don't think we should ignore audiences because that's when it starts to become, uh, that's a world I don't want to be in, is when studios and uh, scripts and, and movies, they start to just go against the grain to the point to where they're shutting the audiences out entirely. I don't want to be, I don't want to live in that world because audiences... They're the reason why these movies exist to entertain or to make you feel emotional or something like that. So I, I, I guess I, I don't know. I don't look at audience scores that often, but I guess my heart's kind of with the audience on, on a lot of these situations. Cause it's like, yeah, I, I get it. You want to be entertained. And so that's, that's kind of where I fall. That's kind of where I fall, but I'm, I'm going to always feel, I'm going to always feel different, um, uh, per movie, you know, cause it's whatever side of the fence at that time that you're going to fall on. Uh, let me see here, guys. Let me make sure I didn't miss any super chats. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. If I miss one, please let me know. Billion Dollar Club. You guys have been awesome. You're asking so many good questions, man. It's hard. To, <laughs> it's really hard to get there. Um, 
What will be Mario? Will already got to that one. Okay, Blue Falcon. Oh, here we go. Disney check, baby. Disney check. We broke after Mario. Oh, no. Disney is struggling. The Marvel's trailer we're going way different from Captain Marvel. That's good. That's good, Marvel. That's what you need to do. Don't like the TV movie crossover, so we'll see if it works. <laughs> Thank you so much, Disney, for the Disney check. Uh, that that's That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Wanting to do something different. Look, the Marvel's trailer, I thought it was fun. You know, it could be a cute movie. I, I think it could be a different movie. If it goes down the path of some of the more entertaining bits of the trailer, I think we got a winner on our hands. But I wasn't a big fan of Captain Marvel. And no, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Brie Larson's in No, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that I thought it was a standard run-of-the-mill superhero movie, to be honest with you. Um, and... I don't have anything against Brie Larson, the actor, but I did not love Brie Larson in the role in the first movie. That being said, I think there's some really cool things in the trailer that get me excited about Brie Larson in this role. Genuinely. Amon Bellani is awesome. She's the MVP, hopefully, of this movie. She's the MVP of her series. She's one of the MVPs of Marvel last year. She was great. She was great. Regardless of how I feel about her series, regardless of how I feel about this movie, I think she's awesome as this character. So there are a lot of things, um, and obviously there, there are three main characters in this movie, but there are a lot of things that would get me really like intrigued by the Marvel. So I think we could have a winner on our hands, but I don't want to get too excited because I, I don't want to you know, be bummed out. Uh, Austin, what did you think of Velma? I thought it was dog shit, and it made me hate Mindy Kaling. Uh, it did not make me hate Mindy Kaling. It did not make me hate Mindy Kaling. But I thought it was terrible. So, <laughs> it was awful. Um, maybe you could have named the show something different and had different names for characters, and it would have been Scooby-Doo that I know and love, but as somebody who grew up with Scooby-Doo and, you know, Zombie Island's one of my favorite animated movies of all time, and like, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And I love the two live-action original movies, I did this was just not the Scooby-Doo that I knew and loved. I thought the humor was more missed than hit. And the animation was interesting. So that was cool. But yeah, I just, I, I thought Vilma was bad. But it didn't make me hate Mindy Kaling. I just, you know, I, uh, uh, Blue Futon. Listen, any more Disney checks? Um, you might have to, you might have to return them, re return the Disney checks. I, I think I work for Warner Brothers now. So they're, they're going to pay me off. So I'm automatically going to give The Flash 10 out of 10. Uh, what's another Warner Brothers movie coming out this year? Um, whoever decides to pay me the most. So so you can return your Disney check. Don't need them anymore. Um, no, I'm just kidding. You can keep asking Super Chats. But, uh, but, but Disney, you got a lot of catching up to do, okay? Super Mario, it's making a lot of money. Yeah, we need something good. We need a good, good movie from Pixar, okay? We need Guardians to be great. We need it. I'm counting on you, Jay counting on you. Uh, no country for old men or there will be blood. Oh my God. Ah, man, I, yeah. Why do you got to do this to me? I mean, genuinely, why do you have to do this to me? This actually hurts. Ah, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go There Will Be Blood. I'm going to go There Will Be Blood. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm going No Country for Old Men. Gotcha. Uh, no Country for Me has always been my favorite out of the two. There Will Be Blood is amazing. I think it's like a 9.5 out of 10. I think it's like a, it's like a one of the best movies of the decade, second best movie of the year. But 2007, for me, No Country was the winner. Was the winner. Just a phenomenal movie. Like I said, it's perfect. Um, I'm going No Country for Old Men. Daggone it. That's a hard question. Okay. Mike says director swap Tarantino's clerks. Oh my God. Or Kevin Smith's Pulp Fiction. Mike, you've made this one a little too easy for me. Just a little too easy. I'm going to go Tarantino's clerks. I think clerks is a good move. Now, I don't know. You, this might have, you might have been pulling my leg on this one. I think clerks is a good movie. I think that's one of Kevin Smith's better films. Um, I genuinely believe it's one of those movies that's really rewatchable. It's really fun. It's funny. But let me tell you, let me tell you, if Kevin Smith ain't directing Pulp Fiction better than Tarantino, it's not happened. No world would that happen. Okay. 
So I'm going Tarantino's Clerks all day long. Kevin Smith had a good run. I would not trust you with Pulp Fiction. I just would not. That is Tarantino's baby. Cradle it all the way home. Uh, would you consider Whiplash perfect? And yes, I would consider Whiplash perfect. I, I, I think that gets every detail perfect and, and makes me get goosebunch, uh, goosebunch, goosebumps every time Fletcher talks or Neiman plays his drum set. I have bias, though. No, listen, with a movie like that, you can have all the bias in the world because I agree with you. I think Whiplash is the perfect movie. It's a stunning movie. It should have won Best Picture that year. It's, it should have been nominated for every single Oscar that year. It's freaking phenomenal. Uh, is Whiplash appropriate for a 10-year-old? I, I would no. No, 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 I would I would not say that's appropriate for a 10-year-old. I would not show a 10-year-old whiplash. I watched 12 Angry Men recently and I absolutely loved it. That's awesome. That that's that is truly awesome. Uh, I think it's a genuinely perfect film. Uh Daniel Kaluuya uh, is playing a new character in Across the Spider-Verse Thoughts. Yeah, I saw I can't remember the name of the character. It's the one where he's playing the uh playing the guitar. The guitar. Um no, it's not a guitar. It's a is he playing bass? Electric guitar or something like that. Uh yeah. Amazing. And it's funny because nobody's talking about Kaluuya. We're talking about which Spider-Man's gonna show up, or Oscar Isaac is, is Spider-Man 2099, but then Daniel freaking Kaluuya, this Oscar caliber actor, is in the movie. I mean that that's really cool. So yeah, I I believe. I believe Kaluuya is gonna crush it, knock it out of the park, to be honest. Is Back to the Future perfect in your opinion? Probably. Uh, I, I've. I don't hold. Now, it's in my top 30 movies of all time. Don't get me wrong. Back to the Future is a phenomenal film, and it's. But I. Mm, yeah, I'd say probably. I have it a bit lower than some of the other films just because some of these other movies have impacted me just a bit more. But for what Back to the Future had to do, what it did on a technical level, on an acting level. From a creative standpoint, yeah, I, I would say Back to the Future is a perfect movie. Yeah, see how I thought that through just now? I would say it's a perfect movie. Do you think Renfield will open well? I haven't seen any buzz. I don't think it's going to do very well, Greg. I haven't seen a lot of buzz, and I've heard a lot of people say, oh, that's not going to be good. So that's never a good sign, but I hope it's good. Hey, Austin, uh, when you do your Mark Wahlberg impression, what are you talking about? I've never done that. Uh, you've got to promote uh, Municipal and the Hallow app. Work out a frame inspired to be better. Yes, I've seen that. I've seen Mark Wahlberg. He's, he does a good job promoting the apps, and, and, and sometimes it, you know people they, they click on him because they say, "Hey, there's Mark Wahlberg," and he knows. My wife's probably listening to me right now. She's going, "What is he doing in there? Is he doing a Mark Wahlberg impression?" You dag on right, woman. I'm doing a Mark Wahlberg impression, and I love you. And and uh, Teddy Ben Transformers. We got a Hop Defender. Yeah, Hop Defender in the chat. Never thought I would see that. The Battle of Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Chris Pratt. Uh, Mario versus... Yeah, you're right. Mario versus Star-Lord at the box office. Oh, my God. Chris Pratt is about to have a year, man. What a, what a big... What a massive star. Fast in your seatbelts. I see what you did there. Uh, what are your favorite sports space movie series or documentary series great question i'm gonna go the last dance michael jordan's documentary amazing warrior spectacular uh hoosiers really good movie uh, uh there, there there are so many i'm a big Waterboy fan i think Waterboy's really funny is it perfect no but it's funny rudy's good i know there's one i'm missing ah air I mean, Air's a sports movie, right? It's behind the scenes Nike drama, but Air's a sports movie. Yeah, Air, man. That's a recent one. Uh, what is your favorite Shakespeare play? Oh, my gosh. Uh, you throw me back to my high school and college days when we, <laughs> we had to learn Shakespeare. I like Julius Caesar. I think Julius Caesar's good. Uh, obviously, Hamlet's a classic. Romeo and Juliet, probably my... No, I'd say Macbeth. I want to say Macbeth. I really like Macbeth. I think um, the Macbeth movie, well, the tragedy of Macbeth, I think a really good movie. And then the Macbeth movie with Michael Fassbender, I, I also think is a good movie. So anytime I see Macbeth, a different take, a different interpretation on it. Um, really interesting. A lot of good, obviously, a lot of good Shakespeare plays, but um, 
Let's see here. Whiplash for a 10 year old, maybe. I thought Goodfellas was the best film, but I was like 11 or 12. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I personally, I, I would not show my 10 year old Whiplash, but I don't have a 10 year old. But this is me thinking in the future. But, you know, maybe once, maybe once you're like 13 or 14, I'm gonna say, listen, you just gotta ignore the bad words. This movie's amazing. Um, how great would it be if Jenna Ortega got cast in the White Lotus season three? Did, did I see that she wanted to be in White Lotus? Somebody wanted to be in White Lotus recently. I can't remember who it was, but but I think it was her. Somebody did. Uh, Where the Crawdads Ads Sing critic score is a 33, while audience score is like a 98. Uh, yeah, I actually thought Where the Crawdads Ads Sing was pretty, pretty, pretty decent, to be honest with you. It was fun. Um, a big emotional epic, you know, a big, big heartfelt true story. It's not the best movie I've ever seen. So I kind of get the critic thing. I think 33 is a little low, to be honest with you. I was in the six-ish range. I think some of the performances were not very good. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I get why audiences loved it. I get it. Um, exactly. Audiences like us who watch more movies than your casual moviegoer doesn't need their opinion. See, Fardine's got it. Fardine's got it. There are a lot of audience. I mean, I got people on Letterboxd that have watched more movies than me. And they're not even a professional critic. So that's the thing. Like, you know your taste. You know what you love. Don't let anybody tell you what you love. You know what you love. But that being said, I think you can take things that people say and kind of say, well, that's a good perspective. That's unique. That's a good way to look at it. And that's how you kind of round out your opinion. I do that, right? I I don't watch reviews until after I do my review, but then after I see somebody's thoughts, I mean, just walking out of the movie theater, talking to the flick pick, you know, we get to converse and, and, and talk about things. And I think that always gives you a good perspective. That's why I enjoy, you know, going and seeing movies with people that I respect. Uh, Ricky Evans. Ricky, I'm looking. I'm looking. Did you ask a question? I'm looking, Ricky. Um, regardless, thank you for the super chat, Ricky. I think you've got a question down here, so I'll get to that. Oh, here's Ricky. I love Jessica Chastain. <laughs> Jessica Chastain. <laughs> why is she so hated? Also, you know what? I want to go back to, to Shelly. Shelly left a super chat. What was your favorite Shakespeare play? I think I don't think I spent too much time. I don't think I spent enough time. You had a super chat, and I I, I want to say I appreciate it. Uh, I moved on fairly quickly, so um, let's let's ask a better let's let's formulate that in a movie question. What's your favorite Shakespeare movie? I don't hate. I don't hate the Leonardo DiCaprio Romeo and Juliet movie. I don't hate that movie. I don't hate it. I think it's entertaining you know and and obviously you've you've taken Shakespeare over the years and you've turned it into different things you've taken the idea of Romeo and Juliet and you've turned it into a rom-com and you and they just did the Romeo and Juliet where people were texting and things like that so I think that's creativity at its finest and then obviously what 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 Hamlet did and how they've changed that story over the years and put it in different formats. So uh, Shakespeare is very influential and people will roll their eyes and say, ah, Shakespeare. But I, I mean, I don't think we would have many, 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 many movies we have today without Shakespeare. I genuinely believe that. So I think it's somebody you have to look back on and kind of respect and appreciate. Okay. Just felt like I had to say that. All right. Ricky, back to um, your question here about Jessica Chastain. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think people... Well, I think some people on YouTube hate Jessica Chastain. We all know who I'm talking about. It's funny. It it cracks me up. To be honest with you. It really does. But I think she's a good actress. I really do. And every time I see her in a role, I laugh, I cry, I appreciate it. I, I respond to a, most of her performances. Not all of them. Not every performance, right? But most of them, I think she's really good. Mm. Hint water. It's watermelon. I wish they would sponsor my channel. I drink, if I had to choose between drinking Hint water and any other drink for the rest of my life, I would choose Hint water. Now, would I prefer a, a, a Coke Zero over a Hint water? Yes. But this is hydrating and I get a splash of flavor. Without the carbs, calories, or sugars, it sounds like a sponsorship. It's not. I just genuinely love it. I, I don't know. Have you ever tried it? It's. <laughs> do you like watermelon? If you don't like watermelon flavor, you're not going to like it. John, the flick pick, doesn't like 
watermelon flavored things. Why? Why? I love you, John. I'm just, I'm just screw with you. Um, I, we learned a lot about each other. I mean, we, we learned so much about, I know too much about that guy. Uh, I drink. Oh, here's a protein shake from earlier. I want to do it for the bit. I want to say, I drink your milkshake. And then I do this, but it's been sitting here for like two hours. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's, it's not good when it's warm. That's, don't, why, why did I do that? I, ew, ew. Although it was chocolate banana. So I do like that flavor. Okay. I've been talking too long. Got a new job at Warner Brothers. <laughs> Blue food talk. Got a new job at Warner Brothers. Here's that check. One penny more. Six ninety six. Six ninety five. One penny more than Disney. For that, we expect one more point on the flash. All right. You drive a hard bargain, Warner Brothers. I feel like I recognize you, but you're Warner Brothers. All right. You drive a hard bargain. Okay. If I if I think the flash is a seventy eight percent, I'm going to give it a seventy nine because you upped it. You went one penny higher than Disney, and I respect that. I appreciate it. So Warner Brothers, thanks for being here. Thanks for the thanks for the the, the standard Warner Brothers paycheck. I am now a Warner Brothers shill, and I will shill for every property and project they have. Somebody's going to clip that. <laughs> Somebody's going to clip that. God, I hope they do. I I love I love madness. Uh, and here's your super chat, Ricky, that I just answered. Why is Jessica Ch Chastain so hated? I think she's a great actress. Again, and just to spend more time since you asked a super chat, uh, I agree. I, I I really do think Chastain. Let's see if I have a, a Chastain. I know I don't have a Chastain, but let me look up some of her movies here. Um, and obviously, Tammy Faye was the most recent, right? Was Tammy Faye the most recent? No, The Good Nurse was the most recent. Which, I thought she was pretty good in The Good Nurse. I thought she was as good as anybody else in that movie. And she wasn't getting awards recognition. Um, obviously, amazing in Interstellar. Ava, that's eh, fine. Uh, Molly's Game, amazing. Maybe her best performance. I would say The Eyes of Tammy Faye and Molly's Game are her two best performances. I think those are her two best. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would say those two because she's great in Interstellar. I could throw Interstellar in there too, but uh, but yeah, I like I like Jessica Chastain. Uh, yes, I love John Flickinger too. Yeah, yeah, John John's a good guy. John's a good guy. Um, what's the best movie you've started but never finished? Ooh, ooh, Mega Star Wars Rocks ninety nine. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. I gotta think about this. I gotta think about this because I have this I have this OCD thing where I can't start a movie and not finish it. But there have been occasions and circumstances. Where I haven't finished a movie. Uh, oh, hang on. I got you. There, there's one. You guys are going to freak out. All right. You guys are going to flip. You're going to flip your lids. Let me just make sure I've got the I've got the right one. Oh, you guys are going to flip your lids. Stanley Kubrick's Paths of Glory. <laughs> I started it and never finished it. Um, I can't remember why I never finished it. I loved it. I thought it was an amazing movie. And then I just never got around to finishing it. And God, now, see, now, oh, you're bringing back memories. Okay, now I've got to finish it. I've, I've, I've got, because my brain's like, Austin, why did you do that? Well, why did you do that? Stanley Kubrick's Paths of Glory. That's probably the best movie that I've never finished. It's an amazing film. But I just, I just, something happened. Something came up. Uh, I think it's 1950s, 1950 film. What was the circumstances? Why didn't I finish it? See, now I'm mad at myself. Oh <laughs> uh, gosh. Well, okay. Mega Star, Star Wars rocks. The one, if you did one thing today, that was amazing. You got me to want to go and finish this masterful movie. So thank you for that. Also, we're at 103 likes at a six o'clock on a Tuesday. That's freaking great, man. We might have to, this might have to be the new time. Six o'clock, man. I'm, I'm liking the six o'clock. I'm liking the way the Wi-Fi's held up today. That's pretty nice. Um, so thank you guys for that. Uh, Kali Wally. Oh, God, now I gotta go finish that movie. No spoilers for D&D, but how about that scene with Chris, Pri Chris Pine distracting the guards? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, man. That's a, when he's, I won't say anything, but when it's just like, look. 
if you guys watching this, and there, there, there's 70 something people watching right now, we had more. I wish I would have said this earlier. If you haven't seen Dungeons and Dragons, and Kali Wally with the with the with the shout out here and a great shout out, a warranted shout out, I think it's going to get buried by Super Mario this weekend. I really do. It's already been buried by Super Mario this last weekend. Please go watch it. This is an example of a Hollywood blockbuster that follows the formula that is somewhat conventional, but it does it right. And I think five years ago, this movie would have like a 98 on Rotten Tomatoes. But now since we've seen this thing, it's not quite that high, but it's still a great experience and a great film. Please go watch Dungeons and Dragons. It is genuinely, genuinely a great movie. Uh, a great blockbuster. I don't, you know, not the most well put together movie I've ever seen, but a great blockbuster, really fun time. Like you said, the scene with Chris Pine, I think there are a couple of scenes. There's one cameo in this film, um, and it has to do with when she goes back home and gets something and has a conversation with someone. And Kali Wally, you know who I'm talking about. There's a cameo from an actor that was just, if it wasn't that actor, the scene wouldn't have worked as well. But because it was that actor, and they, they played it so straight, it's one of the funniest things I've seen all year. It was so funny. So please go watch Dungeons and Dragons. Kali Wally, thanks for giving me that little ch chance to shout that out there. So good. Cash with a super chat. Ben Affleck's... Oh, ooh, director swap again. Oh, my God. Uh, ben Affleck's Goodwill Hunting or Gus Van Sant's Air. Ah, oh, I think it would be very interesting to see either because of the performance and how the performances might differ. Yeah. I think Gus Van Sant... Well, actually, you know what? Because Air, I mean, it's a Ben Affleck movie, but Ben Affleck knows how to keep it light. He knows how to keep the the, the humor interweaving. I mean, the whole the first fifteen minutes of Air, uh, hilarious. Chris Tucker's so funny. Jason Bateman's hilarious. But weaving that is something that I didn't know Ben Affleck would do because we've not really not really seen Ben Affleck do that. It's kind of a new thing for him, to be honest. I mean, he's always had humor in his movies, but not on this level. But then you have Gus Van Sant and Good Goodwill Hunting and. That is emotional to its core. But it's a weird comparison, Cash, because they're very similar. You get a very similar feeling walking out of both of those films. So I got a similar feeling walking out of Goodwill Hunting. I didn't walk out of it. I watched it on VHS. But while, you know, when that movie was over, I felt emotional. I felt devastated. I felt happy. It's all these things. I felt that way in Air. I really did, right? I'm not going to put Air on the level of Goodwill Hunting. I think Goodwill Hunting is another example of maybe an almost perfect movie, a little cheesy, a little, a little silly at times, but I think it worked for the type of film that it is. All that being said, I, I, I think Goodwill Hunting is a better movie. I would like to see what Ben Affleck could do with Goodwill Hunting. So I think I'm going to go Goodwill Hunting. I like Ben Affleck more as a director than Gus Van Sant, even though I think Goodwill Hunting is a better movie than Air, but I would like to see what Affleck could do. Combining maybe a little bit more, a little bit less that cheese, a little bit more of the the, the type of humor that he uses in Air, but then you got the emotions of it all, man. That would be that would be cool. Oh, that's a good question. That's the best director swap we've we've done in a long time. Long time. Um uh, let's see. <laughs> we're talking about Jessica Chastain. Just now seeing your responses to those. Uh, hey, Austin. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining. A little while ago, I'm I'm going, I'm slowly catching up on your all's uh, questions and chats and all those things. By the way, if I missed a super chat, please let me know. Um, okay, here we go. Art the Clown versus Star-Lord of Disguise. Mike, Mike, remember when you said you have the best questions? You weren't lying. You do have the best questions. Um, Art the Clown would haunt Star-Lord's dreams. Rip him limb from limb. Take a chainsaw and cut his body in half and then allow his minions to feast on his innards. It, if we're going 1v1, I mean, obviously Star-Lord Star -Lord had a lot of powers in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but I don't think he has those powers any longer. So we're just, we're just now, we're just talking a human, a human, Versus Art the Clown. I think Art the Clown would win. But who am I choosing as a character? I I like Star Lord better as a character. Uh, but I but I gravitate less towards horror and more towards that type of character. More towards that um, that Indiana Jones adventure. You know, Star Lord's this 
this guy who goes in and steals things. That, that's the type of character I like more. So I, I would say Star Lord, but um, Art the Clown would 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 destroy him. Um, Art the Clown's a great character though. Terrifier too. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. You don't need to see the first one. I think it's good to see the first one, but you don't have to see the first one. It was a really entertaining, fun crazy bloody gory horror movie and um it's hard to get me to love a horror movie like that and i i don't want to say i overwhelmingly loved terrifier 2 but i got really close and that's really cool that's really cool it's a cool feeling all right ricky's ricky's back ricky's back jessica is great this is why your reviews are better ah day ricky Ricky, thank you. Thank you. Jessica is great. Um, I wouldn't say mine are better. I, I would say, again, everybody's got a different perspective. You know, my reviews aren't better than other reviews. And everybody's got a different style, different unique takes, all of those things. That being said, I try not to hate on actors and actresses just for the sake of hating on them. <laughs> I try not to. That That's my goal in life. Uh, actors and, and, and people who are, you know, have some weird opinions and things like that. Uh, I try to keep it positive on this page. And hopefully you guys feel that. Hopefully you respond to that. And I feel your positivity back in my direction. So... I, I, I appreciate that you guys are um, kind of with me on that. And uh, we have some clowns, you know, not Art the Clown, but uh, we have some clowns in the chat every now and then. But I think for the most part, you guys that are here right now, you're great. And I appreciate it. Um, that being said, we've been going for an hour and 30 minutes. We've had a ton of super chats. We've had uh, a, a great amount of likes. I think we've, we've hit over 100 likes today, which is amazing. If you guys haven't hit that like button yet, that would be awesome. That's kind of the post stream when we get people to get the post stream. Uh, that goes a long way. It really does. Uh, but if you guys would like to come back next week, now that I know the Airbnb works, now that I know the Wi-Fi isn't detrimentally terrible, this was a test. It worked. Uh, please come back next week. We're going to be here next week. Now, Tuesday's not going to be the day next week because I may be seeing Bo is Afraid. That may be the day I see Bo is Afraid. So we'll probably do Wednesday. Now, Sunday and Monday would be a good day, but again, my friends are throwing me a diaper party where apparently they all buy me diapers and we go to a casino. Don't know why. Don't, don't know why that's the case, but that's what we're doing. So I'll be gone Sunday and Monday and the beginning of Tuesday. And then Tuesday night, I'm seeing Bo is Afraid. Uh, but I would I would like to um, I would like to come back and do this again next week at some point. So please let me know what day would be best for that. Uh, Mike says, hear me out. Star-Lord has fate on his side. His character survives despite his ineptitude. That is true. That is true. It's also partially his fault that Thanos, you know, when he hit him in the head. That was a struggle. That was a struggle. Um, Cash says, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, go on to the kids. I'm not. Listen, I'm not because I know I'm bad at, at gambling, so I'm not going to have a lot of, but it'll be fun to watch my friends do that. Um, it'll be really fun to watch my friends do that. Um, we got some great questions. Hey, save, save, save the questions that I didn't get to for next week. Save the questions that I didn't get to. Um, let's see. <laughs> Cash. <laughs> Cash is laughing at me. Um, we'll do one more here. G. Colby P. Thoughts on James Gunn talking about superhero fatigue and how it's not about people getting tired of superheroes, but more so about, uh, but more so most of now being nothing but spectacle and not enough on characters. It's an interesting point. I think that's part of it. I don't know if all superhero movies now fall in that category, but I think a lot of them do try to put spectacle ahead of characters, and that's not good. I, I think... You can have movies with interesting characters and interesting dynamics and great relationships, but there's also a, this spectacle to it, you know? So it's one of those things that I think he's got a point. I don't know if that's all it is, because I also think people are just tired of mediocre superhero movies that follow the same formula, but maybe spectacle is that formula. So I, I hope James Gunn focuses on characters with the new DCU. I, I genuinely hope so. And I think we're going to get that with Guardians as well. So I think James Gunn knows what he's doing, but uh, but man, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see 
what he does. Uh, G. Colby P. Great point. Great question. Man, oh man, my wife's probably like, well, what's, what's he doing there? He said he was going, hey, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, uh, that'd be awesome. I tweet out movie opinions. I'll be tweeting out my thoughts on The Pope's Exorcist and Renfield tomorrow, hopefully for both of those movies. Uh, and obviously I do TikTok as well. I uh, post them sometimes and then sometimes I don't. Sometimes we post them, sometimes we don't. And um, some really cool things coming down the pipeline. I'll save announcements for another time, but... Thanks again for watching. Thanks for being awesome. Uh, thanks for all of you guys. I'm seeing everybody in the chat just being amazing. Uh, please say your goodbyes. I'll play you guys off. And uh, let's see, what's what's the right picture? What's the right picture to show here? Let's show, let's show the squad as the final picture. That's the crew. Thanks again, guys. See you soon. All right. Okay. Well, I was muted, so you didn't hear anything I just said. We got a super chat. We got a super chat. We, 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 hold on. Hold, hold on. We're not done. We've got one last second attempt at a super chat. MM saying you can't leave. You're married to the YouTube grind. Austin, not your wife. You're right. You're right. But we've, we've had the cheers and the yells, and we're coming back for an encore. As you guys know, I have to respond to the Super Chats. You're not going to get my face because I love this picture so much. At the last minute. But this is a great question, so I want to respond to it. I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave you hanging. So thanks for the Super Chat. Views on Cobra Kai. Didn't expect to uh, enjoy it so much. Pity it's ending, but I think it could have ended in Season 5. Most of the plots and rivalries have already ended. Yeah, I'm curious to see what they're going to do. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. I was a little bummed out. I was really bummed out when they said, you know, we're only doing one more season and we got a, we got a, one of those things where are they going on too long? Are they ending it at just the right point? I do somewhat agree with you on the fact that I, I think they could have ended it at season five, but there are also so many things left open that I would love to see more of. And I don't want to fully go into spoilers because, you know, obviously this isn't a Cobra Kai live stream and not everyone's gotten to that point. So, uh, not not everyone has seen it, but I will agree with you on the fact that there are things left open, yet there are some great things that closed off. And if that's all we'll ever see, um, then that's okay. But we're getting one more, and and I'm I'm hoping we get closure, closure, closure on all of the characters, whether it be the kids or the adults, um, and obviously with our villainous situation, you know. We're going to have a comeback for the ages, I believe, this next season. And, um, man, there's so much I could get into. You know, I, I, I think this will also be a great opportunity because I haven't really done, like, Cobra Kai tier lists and all of those things. So I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a very Cobra Kai-heavy uh, final season on this channel because I'll be doing a review and a spoiler review, and we'll probably do a couple tier lists and some character rankings. Um, and it's hopefully going to be an awesome season. Uh, Cash says the hierarchy of power in the Cobra Kai universe <laughs> is about to change. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. But it's also um, it's also kind of a shame that it's ending at the same time. My, my heart's going to be broken. So now that it is ending, though, is this new movie that's coming out? Is it is it is it going to be after the seasons that we've seen or is it going to be its own thing? I don't know. G. Kobe P says this picture is Cobra Kai. Yes. This is the ultimate dojo, the YouTube critic dojo. <laughs> and um, I think we could take some people on. Y y yeah, look at that crew, man. Even Perry. I think Perry could handle her own. I really do. Um, thanks for the super chat. Much appreciated. Big Cobra Kai fan. Can't wait for the new season. And um, dude, Dwayne, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, villain of season six. I don't know, but listen, if The Rock can be in it, The Rock will be in it. 
that's what she said? No, that doesn't work. All right. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll turn the music back on. It's just the hemp water. I know, I know. <laughs> hey, buddy. versus Barbie. The sequel. Why am I still here? I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. <sighs> I love it more. So good. Let's see. stuff some good there's some good in water some good watermelon zero calories zero sodium zero carb zero propylene contains no juice pure clean water natural flavors mm. how do they do it though like how do you get the watermelon flavor with no sugar it's unbelievable wizardry to be honest with you <sighs> oh dang it Ricky oh dang it. Here we go. Okay. 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 Well, let's let's do this. Let's. Hang. My wife is. She's staring at me. She's just <laughs> looking at me. Hey, Ricky. Ricky. I am going to answer your question next week. This will be the first question. I'm going to take a picture of it. And I'm going to answer it next week. So this will be your incentive to come back next week's live stream and you'll be the first question of the day my simple answer is yes because I do love Julian more but I will do this I, I this will be that's a first it'll be my first it'll be my first time to this is the ultimate cliffhanger Ricky I need you to come back because I will answer your question don't ask it again don't don't ask it don't do another super chat answer it next week and I will get Madison on the stream she will not do that John Wick 4 is not just good it's phenomenal and and that's it is this music too loud that's ah, all right all right guys I'll see you soon